Hey, this is Tom Nash, and I'm gonna give you the bottom line first in this video. Tom Lee was on CNBC, explained why the market is just correcting and why we're about to see a massive bull run for the rest of 2024. That's just the bottom line for you. Now, for those of you who understand this video, before you label this guy as a permable, which he kind of is, but hold on a second, before you say he's a permable, remember, he did call 2023 perfectly against the grain, and number two, he definitely has the best hair in finance, so you can't bet against that. Now, jokes aside, Tom Lee actually laid out some really interesting arguments, which I want you to hear. So let's start with the first clip, check it out. Inflation expectations have way overshot to the upside. You know, one year forward inflation is at 4.5%. At it's where it was in October, 2022. March 23, October 23, 23. So at the peak pessimism. So this is a very interesting argument. Tom Lee is basically saying here, look guys, the same way that you, the stock market overreacted, pricing in six rate cuts for the 2024 year, before that was clear, before that was certain, you are now overreacting again in the opposite direction, pricing in one or zero rate cuts or maybe even a hike. Both scenarios are unrealistic. But again, I'm gonna explain this part. What Tom Lee is alluding to is that this market in 2024 that we exist in, it's a very bipolar market by design because a lot of the trading is now being done by bots. Algorithmic trading moves like a school of fish. It's no longer human beings are trading. A lot of algo trading is going on, a lot of bots going on. So there's overreactions all the time. And between these overreactions, we find an average at some point. So what Tom Lee is saying is this, you know, that's just a way of the market right now. We overreacted up, we overreacted down, but at the end of the day, we're gonna keep moving towards the three cuts scenario. And that scenario is currently now not priced in because the market has gone and priced in one rate cut. And when that happens, the market is gonna go up again. That's a valid argument, especially when you look at the oversold, overbought numbers. As I showed you in my previous video, where I told you, hey, do not be played by this mainstream media bullshit that they're showing you that the market is collapsing, space aliens are investing in basically the collapse of the world and you should all sell, right? I told you, don't be fooled by this correction. This is not the end of the world. This is not a stock market crash. But I've also showed you how quickly we have changed and how we went in one month from February to March to April, from completely being overbought to oversold. In March of 2024, we had 46% of stocks being overbought on the S&P 500. In April of 2024, what I showed you yesterday, we had 6% of stocks being overbought. So we went down from 46 to six within one month. So basically 94% of stocks right now in the S&P 500 are no longer overbought. Does this mean we turn around today? No, but basically what Tom Lee is saying here is that the market is currently oversold. That's one thing. Yeah, short interest has soared. Uh, like one week, Goldman shows one week in short interest in ETFs rose by the most since 2022. Median short interest in stocks is at basically a three-year high. And now we just need a positive catalyst. I think as long as inflation tracks better than expected, uh, I think we're in a good position to rally. And this is a very interesting argument. So Tom Lee was on CNBC before the March CPI data came out, before the inflation of March came out, and he was very categoric about it. He was very adamant saying, look, it's gonna be cooler than expected, the market is gonna fly up. He obviously got it wrong, which is okay. We all get stuff wrong all the time. This clown thought that 2023 is gonna be a stock market crash. I mean, we all get stuff wrong all the time. So I don't hold it against him. But it's funny and it's interesting because you know when you can punch in the face by reality, sometimes you're a little bit more careful. So this time he's coming on and he's talking about PC data. By the way, PC is something that the Fed absolutely loves to look at, saying, look, if PC data, if PC data comes in cooler than expected, that's gonna be a major catalyst for the stock market to basically break away from this little bit of negativity that we saw over the past two weeks. Obviously he's not wrong, that's 100% true. The only problem is we don't know if PC data comes in cooler or hotter. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't have the inside track. I hope he's right, of course, but maybe he's not. But actually, I don't think he needs to be right on this. Even if PC data does not come in cooler, I think we are still on track for three rate cuts this year. And the reason might be something that nobody else is talking about. I'm gonna get to it a little bit later. Let's keep watching what Tom Lee said, and then I'll explain you why I think the Fed is gonna cut three times no matter what. 
unless, of course, you know, inflation is going to go through the roof. But unless inflation goes through the roof, we're going to have three cuts this year, probably, because of something completely unrelated to inflation. But let's keep going with Tom Lee. Check this out. Well, they say bull markets rise in an escalator, fall in an elevator. So it's what you'd expect in a rising trend is sharp corrections, and it shakes people out. And Now, this is a very interesting point he's making here. He's saying that market corrections, especially sharp corrections, like the one we just had, shake out people. What does that actually mean? What he's actually trying to say here is that this is healthy and it happens two or three times a year. If you're talking about a 5% pullback, three times a year, a 10% pullback, once per year, every single year, even in a great year. What actually does for the market pullbacks like this, it basically cleans up a lot of the aggressive mindset. A lot of the people who think that, oh my God, yeah, NVIDIA is going to go to, you know, $4,000 per share, Palantir is going to go to five hundred this year and all this stuff. It cleans out a lot of this aggressiveness, the unrealistic expectations, and it brings the market back to reality, which is healthy. I mean, we don't want price action to go absolutely ballistic outside of the stratosphere. We want the price action to follow as much as possible the fundamentals. So every once in a while, a correction like this is healthy because it brings people back down to earth. That's okay. Another interesting argument is that geopolitics is getting better. You know, oil is down 3% over the past five days, currently at $82. We were already at 90. You know, it's good for inflation. It's good for CPI. And it's definitely good for Tom Lee's argument that inflation is cooling down. Now, inflation was high for about a year and a half. He's right. Now, here's the crazy part. It never really reached the levels that we've seen, not in the length not in the height of the 70s inflation. We never really hit the Paul Volcker era where it was sticky and for a long time and absolutely insane. There's a good argument here to be made, which I think I agree with, is that you know what we're seeing right now is not a replay of the 70s. In fact, uh, this is the you know the less breath of inflation before you know we move on to bigger and better things and before the market goes back into bullish cycles. It is true, but you have to remember there's a huge, huge monkey ranch here, a huge unexpected development that may happen or may not happen. Uh, you see, at the end of the day, you have to understand that oil prices are going to be a huge catalyst in wherever this thing goes. If oil prices, for whatever reason, may it be summer travel or geopolitical tensions because, you know, the Middle East can reignite at any moment. If oil actually shoots up to the hundreds, then inflation is going to be absolutely horrendous. And then the whole theory of Tom Lee of the Fed are actually dropping rates. They're not going to pan out. Now, I will also talk about the fact that uh, there's a lot of chatter right now about, you know, the Fed pivoting doesn't necessarily mean a good thing for the stock market. Look, you have to understand, uh, you know, um, empirical data like this. Whenever we had rate cuts in the past, for the most part, the rate cuts, the pivot by the Fed comes into weakness. The Fed doesn't pivot unless they have to, right? Usually that happens when something breaks. Unemployment usually happens. GDP comes down and the economic crisis or recession or whatever you want to call it, some underlying thing in the economy breaks which forces the Fed to start losing the rate and actually going down in the interest rates. Right now, we're not in that situation. Right now, the Federal Reserve looks at the market. GDP is growing very quickly. Unemployment is very low. So there's nothing that's supposed to indicate a weakness in the economy. So if the Fed in this scenario chooses to bring rates down as a proactive measure, not as a reactive measure, then we don't expect to see the market basically tanking because money is now cheaper. It's absolutely insane. Think about it, what you're saying here. The argument here is, um, yeah, so the Fed is going to make money cheaper, more accessible, and it's going to flood the market with huge amounts of resources, and that's going to crash the stock market. I think you don't understand the difference between causation and correlation. <laughs> There's a lot of times where the Fed pivot came at times of great economic weakness, and that impacted the stock market. But I can assure you there's never been a time where the Fed actually dropped rates in good economy and caused the stock market to come down. Another interesting argument here is that the Fed doesn't really mean the tough talk we've seen over the past few times we heard Jerome Powell talk and others. Because the Fed talks tough 
to bring up inflation expectations and bring down excitement so that people actually spend less because they anticipate harsher economic times and then inflation will come down. Essentially, creating negative sentiment brings down inflation as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Insane, right? But it actually is true. If people are excited, if they think inflation is over, it's party time, they're going to be spending like crazy pushing inflation up. It's very, very simple. Now, we have to talk about why I think the Fed, unless something crazy happens, unless we see oil prices go to $110, unless CPI goes to 6 7%, unless something crazy happens, the Fed will have to drop rates. Unfortunately, it has to do with the way the U.S. economy is built. Right now, we have a problem. We have GDP of $21 trillion. That's what we generate in a year. On the other hand, we owe $31 trillion. So we owe way more than we produce. Sadly, just four years ago, our debt was $17 trillion. So we actually produced more than we owed. But you see, the real problem is that the United States is the reserve currency of the world. And that status, beyond just being good clout, actually allows the U.S. to sustain the current standard of economy it has. Because if everybody else wants the dollar, there's high demand globally for the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is the world's money. Everybody wants it. Now, if everybody wants it, every time the U.S. government issues bonds, essentially borrows money, everybody wants that dollars. And because the demand is high, the price goes up, the yield goes down, the U.S. has to repay less interest than other countries when they borrow money. And because it's dirt cheap for the U.S. to borrow money, it can essentially borrow money to infinity and provide all these resources, all this infrastructure, all this investment in its own GDP, fueling its own growth, essentially creating an infinite money glitch. The problem is that money glitch also is predominantly dependent on being able to borrow money for cheap. But what happens when you yourself basically increase your own interest rates? Well, in that case, you create a problem for yourself because that money you're borrowing right now, you have to pay way higher interest than you did before you raised your own interest. So just to give an example, when we had 0% interest in the pandemic good old days, uh, the annual return that the United States uh, paid, the interest payments pretty much, were 1.5% of the U.S. GDP. So 1.5% of U.S. gross domestic product in uh, 2020 and 2021 was pretty much interest payments. Right now, we're at 2.5% of GDP. So we went up within a couple of years from 1.5% to 2.5% of GDP of interest payments, repayments. That is literally more than we spend on roads, education, and healthcare, and a bunch of other stuff. It's absolutely insane. Two and a half percent of GDP going to interest payments. And the way the money printer is going right now, it's not going to slow down anytime soon. We are basically increased the spending on interest payments within a year by 40%. Because while in 2022, we spent $480 billion repaying interest. Last year, we repaid $660 billion in interest. We spiked our own interest payments by 40% in a single year by raising interest to 5%. So when you think you have a tough time because you have a mortgage now that's way more expensive, look at this. 5% interest means 40% more interest repayment. That means less money goes to stuff that generate GDP. When you don't invest as much in education, infrastructure, industry, then your GDP doesn't grow as fast and your economy slows down and you might create a recession. So the U.S. literally cannot afford to stay in a 5% interest for long. So longer, higher, all this crap is just empty talk by the Fed. Unless we have like 8 9% inflation that would be worse than this, we're going down. And we're going down probably three times this year. Unless, of course, oil spikes to the 100s, 110, 120. In that case, all bets are off. But the real question is, how am I playing this? Well, my next play, increase the hell out of my Tesla position, buy into the weakness, mm, not playing the earnings game at all. I don't care. If it actually comes down on earnings, great. I'm emptying the tank. I'm DCAing. I'm buying more bullish assets in a bear market because Tesla is in a bear market on its own. And it is a bullish asset if you actually understand the numbers. And I've made many videos explaining it. And the reason why is very simple. Three letters, FSD, monopoly, industry standard, Tesla licensing, 80% gross margin, infinite money glitch. Very, very cheap. Great business. Bad stock. Exactly what I want. I'll see you in the next one.